Welcome back to another video. I'm Josiah Decker. The acoustics in here are horrible. And today we're talking about my um, favorite film camera that I have right now, the Canon QL17 G3. It has this really cool leather case. This was actually my great grandfather's camera. Um, it's not that old, it's from 1970, around there. I couldn't find a serial number on this camera body, so I don't know what year it was made but it was made around the 70s. So this is my favorite film camera right now. It shoots 35 millimeter film. It's really cool. <laughs> Just an overview. By the way, it was in really excellent condition. I don't know if you can see that. The lens is pretty much flawless. So this is a rangefinder, first of all, which is unique. I haven't seen a lot of rangefinders online like Leica is one of the big brands I think that some of the other companies like the big camera companies made rangefinders but I've mostly seen SLR cameras with a mirror so this is a rangefinder if you don't know what that is they don't have mirrors so pretty much it's straight through the lens to the film so it also has a different type of shutter it's a leaf shutter so it's really quiet which is really awesome I love how it sounds it's so quiet It's, this camera specifically is a fixed focal length 40 millimeter lens. You cannot remove this lens, it's just fixed to the camera. It is f1.7 all the way to f16. It also is bulb mode all the way up to 1 500th of a second. This camera is either fully manual or you can shoot it in shutter priority mode. So you switch the aperture ring to auto and then it'll meter for whatever it thinks the best aperture is based on what shutter speed you've selected. It won't let you take the photo though if it thinks it's too bright or too dark. So with that built-in meter you can see what aperture it's going to choose but you can't use the meter in manual mode. So you're just stuck shooting auto unless you switch it to auto, see what aperture to choose, switch it to manual. But that's kind of weird so anyway I mostly use my phone to meter with this camera or the sunny 16 rule one of the reasons that's my favorite camera is because I only own a few film cameras I own this one I own a Minolta SLR which is bigger and heavier so I like how small this is it is hefty it doesn't feel light it doesn't feel cheap I like how quiet it is I really like how quiet it is another cool feature that it has is on the back here you can see the red and white stripes. Those move whenever you're using the um, film advance lever. And so you know for sure that your film is caught. Um, the name QL17G3, QL stands for quick load. So whenever you open the back of the camera, I can't right now because I have another roll of film in here. But whenever you open the back of the camera, there's a plate adjacent to the film door that folds down over the film first, holding it in place so that when you advance your film, it catches easier. It's a lot easier to load film in this compared to my Minolta. The G3 stands for grade three, meaning that it's a, meaning that it's a higher quality grade camera than some of their other cameras might have been, so it's a more premium camera. And the 17 is actually 1.7 because it's an F1.7 lens. So that's pretty much all the features of the camera. It takes a button cell battery. Whenever I press this light, it the battery check shows that my battery has voltage. So anyway, um, this camera comes with a flash, which I actually happen to have, although mine is not functioning right now because of some corrosion. So it comes with a nice little carrying case. It says Canon right there. And then this is what the flash looks like. With this flash, I believe you get sync up to a second, but I might be wrong about that. Here's what the flash looks like. It's called the Canon Light D. Um, like I said, I haven't been able to make it work. I've put batteries in it and it doesn't, just doesn't shoot. Um, you may not be able to see in there. There's a little bit of corrosion, so I just need to get some lemon juice and clean that out, which I tried. But anyway, it's a pretty cool little light. So on the camera, it would look like this. Hopefully one day I'm able to use it because that would be pretty awesome. So this is what it would look like. 
pretty cool looking. So anyway, I, I'm just a fan of this camera. It might partially be sentimental value, although I never saw my grandfather use it because I think it was not used in the time that I was alive, but it just is a really cool camera. I really enjoy it. Some people have compared this camera to being a Leica killer because Leica cameras are typically like the Leica M, M6. Um, those are usually rangefinders, and so this is a much cheaper rangefinder. I think that the photos have all turned out really well with this camera, but Leica glass is exceptional. Leica camera bodies have interchangeable lenses, which this does not, and Leica are also like five times the price. So, you know, there's a trade-off, but I certainly think that for the money, you can't go wrong with this camera. It's a really unique, it's a rangefinder, which I enjoy the focusing system on the rangefinder. How it works is there's a, there are two squares, and whenever the image inside them lines up, you know that you're in focus. It took a little getting used to, but it's not too bad. And also, there's not that much of a difference in composition between the uh, viewfinder and the lens. That's pretty much it about this camera. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below and subscribe. It would be really appreciated. We're almost to 10 subscribers now, and I think only a couple of those are me on different accounts, so that's pretty exciting. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.